I strongly believe there is hope for my son. And I believe that even if there is the slightest hope, even if it's just 10%, it is worth for us taking it. I remember it was around April, and I uh, had gone to work and then my wife called me and told me the labor pains had started. I stopped everything and drove home, took her to hospital. And then next day in the morning she called me telling me when are you coming to see your son. It was really a joy to me. It was excitement. It was something a day that any parent cannot easily forget. In African culture, we name children after our parents. So we decided to call him Marvin. When Marvin was born, he was a normal boy. He grew up well. He even walked at the normal stage of walking. But by the time he reached seven years, we felt like um, he withdrew from the rest. He was not playing much, as usual. He used to spend so much time watching TV, unlike to other kids. He could go play for a short while and come back. He used to get so angry so fast. You could feel when he's walking, he's like, he's more using his, his toes to walk because when you used to buy some school shoes, they used to get finished from the front. So we used to wonder. But to us, it was just normal. We thought it is maybe just the way he is. He'll come out to grow it. Until when it reached almost seven and a half to us, uh, eight years, and we felt like he started falling down. That was an alarming part because you just walk in the house and one time he's down. You ask him what happened. He doesn't know. Nobody knows. Nothing has tripped him. So that got us a little bit scared. And then when at the same age, he was, when you tell him to go up the stairs, he will struggle a lot. He will struggle, he'll have to hold with both hands. That is the point we noticed, probably there's something wrong. And then my wife went to Google as usual, and then I think started Googling the signs and symptoms. And he came up with a name, something muscular dystrophy. I got scared, so I left the office at the same time, drove home. I got him watching TV as usual, told him we need to go and see a doctor. So the doctor gave us the sad news. He told us, uh, your son has muscular dystrophy, but he'll need to undergo further tests to know exactly what kind of muscular dystrophy he has. And uh, that is the last news we expected to hear. I was, my wife was not there, she was at work, I was alone with him. So I went home, not really knowing how I reached home because I found myself at home with the, with the boy. We didn't talk the whole, ro whole way. He was asking me so many questions. I don't know what I answered him. To him, he was fine. He didn't know what's going on. It really felt like, I don't know, maybe the end of the world. I can't explain how I felt. My wife was crying all the time. I told her you don't need to cry because our son is still strong and still here. So we started looking for what do we do. We visited four doctors and all of them were saying uh, this condition usually, for me if you tell, the first one said it's not in a bad state so just wait, we'll start managing it later. The second doctor told me well we can start the patient on steroids. Um, and then maybe see what we can do. I mean, there was no really solution because every doctor was giving you what he thinks. 
to us, we felt like every doctor did not really know what is the way forward. So everybody was just confused. We didn't get any credible what you can say that you can rely on it for the next maybe even one year or two years, nothing. In the middle of the night, I just started Googling about muscular dystrophy. Then we saw something to do with the neurogen. It was a short video, it's about two minutes or so. So we decided to watch it. At first, we thought anybody can say anything on YouTube nowadays. After watching the first stem cell therapy video from Neurogen, there are a number of other videos, some ranging up to 2012, some uploaded in 2012, 2011. That gave us a lot of courage. I told my wife what we need to do. Maybe we need to talk to these people and see what they think. Then she told me, India, uh, be very careful. <laughs> I said, well, at this point, uh, we have very little choices. So we looked at the videos, we saw the number there, we called the first time, somebody picked, we didn't talk, and then we hung up. Well, at that point, I wasn't very sure that I wanted to pursue it, so I continued researching. I looked at other hospitals, but what I picked from out of them that Neurogen was more specialized on that kind of conditions. So I went back to my doctor, we did a test, and uh, most of them came positive. So I sent, I mailed Dr. Nandini the results. And she said, looking at this, we still have to evaluate and look at him and do further genetic testing. Then we can be very sure of what we are dealing with. And he said that can only happen two ways. Either we sent the sample or we come ourselves with the boy. So we started brainstorming about that. That was about in 2015, uh, November. We started thinking what we do. We go, we not go. What options do we have? So. We took a loop of faith and decided, you know what, we need to go. Actually, it was not really to come for treatment. We came because we wanted just to come and see what's going on. It was me and my wife and Marvin. So when we came and we were brought to Neurogen, we were picked from the airport straight away to the hospital. The first person we met was Dr. Nandini, who came to our room and explain to us everything, explain to us the expectation of what we expect, explain to us um, what they've done before and for how long and they've been doing this, and the number of patients they've done on that. And that really changed everything. It gave us a lot of hope. It really, we saw like this light. It is not really all gloomy the way we expected. I think that was the first night we really slept well with my wife. To be honest, we were in the hospital, squeezed in a small hospital bed, but I think we slept like babies. So we decided the same night that we should go on. Let's proceed. So in the next day in the morning, doctors started coming in. Three days were just for the test, and then the next day we were taken to an assessment room where Marvin was assessed almost every moving joint of his body as far as strength is concerned. When I was told that I need to sign a contract, they showed me what they are going to do. They showed me the expectation. They showed me the risks. And both me and my wife we were in agreement that it's worth taking it. So the next day, they took him for theater. They said for the first 30 minutes for harvesting of the stem cells. And then he was returned actually after about 30 minutes. And uh, he was slightly sedated, so he just slept in the, on his bed with a drip. After another about three hours, he went to the theater again, and we were told he's now going to be injected, the stem cells, or to be done the bone marrow transplant. And another, that procedure also took another 30 minutes or so. And after that, he came with all the bandages all over the body. <laughs> And it was kind of scary, but uh, we had still hope. We were very strong inside because we were thinking this is probably the last bridge you need to cross to get to where we are going. But after about three hours, he was all over the place, walking, no pain. He couldn't tell me he's feeling any pain. I, okay, I was worried there's a bandage behind his back, but he's telling me he's feeling nothing. There are a number of therapies he underwent. First, we started with the occupational therapy about uh, two hours. 
and then he rested, and then we went to physiotherapy. And then we went for speech therapy. My then, what is this baby? How is she? What is it? By the ninth day after we did the stem cell, the first thing we noticed, casually, anybody could notice that his appetite improved. Initially, he could not even raise up himself when doing exercise, but you could see he's trying. You could see he's starting to raise his leg slowly by slowly on his own. After about four weeks, we saw some considerable change. He could walk easily before he used to fall about two, three times a day. So he was very afraid to walk. So you could see him, he's gone out, he's walking. If you ask him to do something, initially he used to get very angry because he doesn't want to wake up. He struggles to wake up. You will see he just jumps up, springs up. He started to wake up more easily, less effort is using. And then we thought, we used to tell, I told my wife, I think it's working. Holding the pen was a problem. Now he can hold the pen nicely. The handwriting, you can actually read what he's writing. His concentration, before it wasn't very good. He had a drastic change in his skin because initially the skin looked to be kind of scaly. Now you can see smoothening. We also noticed that uh, he could go on his knees and try to walk on his knees on his own. The first day we tried it in the hospital, we were to hold him. But now at home, he was able to walk on his knees, crawl comfortably. You tell him go, he goes. You tell him come back, he comes back. Before he could not even hold to stand on his knees. But now he could actually, you throw the ball to him when he's on his knees and he could hold it and throw back to you. Those are some of the remarkable, I think, improvement we saw. We came for the second stem cell. The procedure was easy because we were more relaxed. And from even the test, you could see the CPK levels had come down. The MRI reports were indicating also some improvement. For example, when he's doing the rolling exercise, he rolls so comfortably. He's using very little effort. Uh, you can feel that uh, he's happy. He could go a week without falling down. That was, to me, was really a blessing because whenever my son used to fall down, I used to feel like, what can I do? Without getting embarrassed himself in school, it was really something good for us. We prayed for God, we were very happy. And secondly, on top of that, he could compete with his colleagues, especially when it comes to bicycle riding. There are days I used to just sit and watch him ride with his friends in the estate, and I will say, God has answered my prayer. <laughs> what I'm happy is that I've not seen any deterioration. There's no negative change because this condition you deteriorate with time. But for the last two years, I think we've maintained where we were. For example, going up the stairs. Sometimes you can get, he has a slightly higher speed. But sometimes he struggles. But compared to when we started, I cannot say it is worse maybe it is better slightly better and then that's why i say it's more or less like i've not lost anything looking at waking up from the floor he still wakes up with slight effort however but at least he's not any worse he's not worse than he was two years ago this is a boy who could not go 200 meters without complaining that i'm tired now we walk for two kilometers we walk for about a half a kilometer, one kilometer, we rest. We rest for 10, 15 minutes. We walk again for another half, one kilometer. We it was remarkable. And unless I told you my son has a problem, when he walks sometimes, you might not notice it. It's only that, even, in fact, people in the estate say my, my son has a bounce. He's bouncing. I tell him that is how people from our village walk. But really, it is an improvement that uh, all of us in the family, we are happy. He plays a lot nowadays. He's very good in making toys with his fingers. He can fix anything in the house. He fixes some things, things that I, don't, I cannot fix. He tells me, Daddy, this is broken. Okay, let's open here. Let's do this. 
let's do that. It gives you suggestions. And if you, for example, put a password on your phone. My son, I used to draw a pattern. My son will take my phone, put it in the direction of the light, see the pattern and repeat the pattern until he gets it. So I think it is just God-given improvement, to be honest. Out of the medical institutions that I've visited and uh, medical institutions I've worked to, I think Eurogen seems to have a lot of professionalism. First and foremost, there is complete separation of duties, specific people for specific roles. Everybody tends to work at a time. You don't have to call anybody to come and clean your room. You don't have to call for food. You don't have to call a nurse to come and check on your patient. The rotational doctors come after every about an hour or one and a half hours. How is he doing? Everybody seems to be concerned. It's like a family. I sometimes think this is my second home because I come here, I'm more relaxed. I leave my room not locked. I have never missed a coin or anything. I mean, it is kind of, the level of professionalism is amazing. We are human beings. It is very painful to watch your son or your daughter suffering and there's nothing you can do. If there's the slightest remote chance that this therapy stem cell can help, I would recommend anybody to try it. Because so far for me, I think I am happy. I'm happier than I was two years ago. We really have big dreams for him. We really do because as a parent, the biggest dream you like to see is your children grow up big, marry, have a family. I dream seeing him as the general manager or the managing director of our company or our business. And it is a dream that I hope and believe that it will come true. Mommy and daddy's boy love Marvin.